Come with us now on a journey through time and space. To the world of the mighty bones. Welcome to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead drinking, mead making, mead brewing, pretty much any question you're willing to send to me. The first question I will answer this week is one that we get all the time. I probably got it somewhere between 10 and 15 times at an event last week, and it is, how do you make your mead gluten-free? I don't make my mead gluten-free. Gluten, this already oft misunderstood plant protein, does not occur in honey or apples or any number of other things. So cider makers and mead makers don't make their products gluten-free, they are gluten-free. If you're going to avoid gluten, use Wikipedia or another online resource, they are there for a reason. On a tour last week, a home brewer named Alan asked me, how we ferment our mead so quickly. We're much faster than most home brewers. We're roughly honey to glass in about a month. And there are a lot of little tricks that we use, and we have lots of articles, which I'm sure Rebecca will put in the thing beneath me. But there's a secret trick we use here to help mellow our mead. Most brewers, mead makers, and winemakers only use thyme to mellow their products. I use Hall & Oates. Our next question comes from Ryan, who asks, I saw in a lot of your marketing materials that you refer to your product as craft mead and other meads out there as artisanal honey wines, and I was wondering what the definition of those things are. The problem, Ryan, is there aren't really definitions. Those are our in-house terms, and they're shared by much of the mead-making community. Basically, we make a mead that's lighter in alcohol, very low in sugar, and meant to be enjoyed every day in moderation. A lot of the other meaderies make an artisanal product. It's small, handcrafted, higher in alcohol, higher in sugar, and they really intend it as a special occasion drink. Our next question, or more accurately, complaint, comes from Cheryl, who says, I go to brewfests in Vermont all the time, but I never seem to be at the same brewfest you guys are at. How does that happen? Well, Cheryl, I can say it's not our fault because we always post where we're going to be. And also, we're not always at brew fests. Last week, I was at a cider festival, and Kelly was at the Golden Honey Festival at the Golden Stage Inn in Proctorsville, Vermont. Actually, I'm kind of like a walking billboard. I really should start selling this advertising space. Our last question this week comes from at Sonic and Knuckles 62. And it's unusual in that I actually don't know the answer. He asks, does mead need to breathe? I know yeast needs to breathe, but I don't know about even our own product. So I'm asking for you to give it a try at home. Pour out a glass of mead, let it sit for a few hours, pour out another glass of mead, and see if you can taste the difference. Let us know your results. That's our last question this week, so I'm going to send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. This week's term is allergy. In addition to misunderstanding gluten, many people misunderstand the difference between an allergy and an intolerance. Allergies are non-dose specific and often life-threatening. Intolerances are highly dose specific and rarely life-threatening, though not always. Those are your words of the week, allergy and intolerance. Keep sending your questions and I will get to them as soon as possible. Cheers. <laughs>